wanted to give you an update on my hobby project, 3Rec. I built a Homebrew 6502 computer. I decided to make it play Load Runner. That journey is mostly documented in previous videos. I settled on the Apple II version of Load Runner because the graphics hardware of the Apple II was relatively simple to the other 80s 8 bits, and that it didn't have any custom graphics ICs. The system could be implemented with off the shelf logic. Having achieved this unbelievable goal, I'm now iterating on my design to play the Apple II version of Ultima 4 with mocking board, sound, and full Apple II color. One thing I could do that might make this whole project simpler would be to go look at the Apple II schematics and build a hardware clone. That's not what I'm doing. This is my own hardware design. That's most of the fun. My design is getting closer to the ABI of the Apple II to make the software porting simpler. I may or may not embrace this idea of a perfect ABI with the Apple II at some point. As of now though, it's not really a goal. Ultima 4 is my focus, and I might bring some other games along as I go. All of this stuff are in the GitHub, so you can play around with the Logisim project, schematics, and emulator if you'd like. I've added logic for soft switching and banking. I've expanded the Logisim project to include the soft switches. The logic adds support for graphics, text mode, high res, low res, full slash mixed mode, page one, or page two. In my previous design, some of these could be flipped by writing a bit pattern to a memory address. This required multiple instructions to flip a switch. With this logic, simply reading the address will flip the switch now. That means flipping a switch with a single 6502 instruction. I added a soft switch that isn't part of the Apple II. I have a soft switch that will bank in MS Basic into part of the RAM region. Because of all of the changes needed for Ultima 4, I had to move MS Basic out of the typical ROM space. I want to keep basic though, so I created a switch to bank it in and out from address 9000 to BFFF. Another difference from the Apple II is that I'm making the C000 address RAM. This address is used by the Apple II to read from the keyboard. On the Apple II, you strobe the keyboard by reading C010 and then read C000 to get a byte from the keyboard. In my case, I've got a PS2 keyboard and I'm using an interrupt to process the clock and data signals. By making C000 RAM, I can have that interrupt routine write to C000. The strobe will do nothing, but C000 will contain the latest key event value. When the key up is processed by the interrupt routine, I clear out that memory. So far, this seems to work okay. I've also got the banking logic implemented in the simulator. For the banking logic, I've used Apple Win as a guide. The technique here is to boot up the Apple II DOS, jump into the monitor, and then start flipping the soft switches and observe the behavior. Apple Win has UI that shows the state of the language card in the hardware, so that's really helpful in nailing down the expected behavior. Using the monitor to read and write from RAM makes the behavior perfectly clear. The next step in my process was to update the schematics. I did some reorganization. I created an address decoding and banking page and added all the logic that I designed in the simulator. I also took a shot at hooking up the soft switches in the schematics as well. The next step here is to implement the schematics into the breadboard. I've already found and fixed some bugs in the schematics by doing this. I found a way to remove an unnecessary chip, simplified some logic, and updated both Logisim and the schematics. There are slight differences in simulator logic. In my circuits, the flip-flop reset and set are inverted, and clock behavior are inverted from Logisim. My approach here is to stand up the switches side by side such that I can use the computer to flip the soft switches by reading addresses, but have not yet integrated the switches back into the broader machine. This helps me verify that the switches will behave as expected without rendering my machine inoperable. It looks like it might be pretty easy to support mixed mode, so I think I'll do that. I will need to update the ROMs to adjust the starting address for memory reads for each line. This video display will be funky. When in mixed mode, the top part of the screen will have a resolution of 280 by 168, and the bottom of the screen will be 320 by 24 should be interesting to see what a display with two different horizontal resolutions looks like. I'm including the low-res, high-res soft switch, but won't be implementing full low-res support there in the near future. In parallel, I've been updating the emulator. I implemented the soft switching and the banking in the emulator and also into the broader machine. Emulator changes are so much easier than hardware changes. It's ideal to be able to test and develop the SD card routines in an emulator. For the initial SD card bring up, I used an FT232H connected to a micro SD card and a USB connected to the, to the machine. And this was super useful. The emulator would then run spy over USB to this device. 
it worked, but it was imp impractically slow. I did make a huge quality of life improvement in the emulator though, a mock SD card. The SD card logic requires FAT32, so I took a 256 gigabyte micro SD and partitioned off two gigabyte as FAT32. Once I had formatted that partition with the correct requirements, 512 byte cluster size, etc., I used a tool to rip an image of the SD card to a file. I installed imdisk, which it allows for the mounting of virtual disks, and this allows me to use DOS to copy files uh, into and out of the virtual disk image. I updated the emulator to memory map the SD card image and, to, and wrote enough code to emulate the SPI bus connection that the current system expects to deliver the bits to the computer from the SD card. I have the reads working now and it's pretty awesome for development. I think this approach will be a huge help in getting the disk routines working for Ultima 4. Just for fun, I've started extracting various Apple II games and trying them out. Using Apple, Apple Cider to read Apple II disk files from archive.org. I've only been able to extract binaries from a subset of these disk images. I found that many have simple dependencies on the Apple II monitor ROM, and I've started porting parts of that Apple II monitor ROM over. Many games are kind of working. This is super encouraging because it means that once my hardware changes are integrated, I should be able to get these games working on the actual hardware as well. And that's just fun. I'm slightly terrified to integrate the soft switches with the machine as it's working so well. But this is the price of progress. I'll be at the Portland Retro Gaming Expo October 13, 14, and 15, 2023, and we'll have a booth. I'll bring my PCB version of the hardware if you want to try it. Hope to see you there.